Saubon, and that is hello in Isizulu, which is one of South Africa's 11 official languages. Yeah, no, 11, right? But yeah, I'm just here back in South Africa and I'm heading off to gym. Uh, I really didn't want to go. <laughs> um, so that's something I thought I'd talk about in a video is how to stay fit while you're traveling around and living in different countries and moving around a lot and uh, what it takes to motivate yourself and some tips and strategies for basically just staying in shape while you live one of those lifestyles where you know you don't necessarily have a single place where you live so let's crack into it right, so i'm gonna go check out a gym and see if i can negotiate a short-term kind of deal with them which is kind of hard to do here in south africa and some countries more than others southeast asia is pretty good about just letting people show up and use the gym and just pay per day or whatever but here it's kind of difficult and i'm just gonna have to see what i can do um, otherwise, you know, you might have to pay quite a bit more. So let's see what I can do and I'll report back. Alright, so just got a gym workout in and I pretty much failed on what I was planning to do and what was going to be my first tip, which is to try and negotiate. So what you normally can do is say, okay, I'm only going to use this equipment. I'm going to use these machines, all that kind of stuff. And maybe only go at these times and only for this long, and then you can get a discount. Well, I basically didn't manage to do that at all. This is Virgin Active, which is a really nice gym but I just signed up for a month for the most I've ever paid for a gym before. It was like the equivalent of $70. So it's mm. a lot of money, but you know, um, I've got like nationwide access, which is pretty cool. I'm actually gonna be traveling around South Africa a lot over the next month. So that's cool. I get to go to any of the Virgin Actives in any city. So I can go down to Cape Town, which I'm planning to do. Um, beautiful city, I'll show you guys when I get there. But that's usually something you can do in Asia is to negotiate and get a shorter term deal which can work out and not cost you too much. Alright, so basically what you want to do is find something that you like to do. So you might already have a sport or a hobby uh, that you can do while you're traveling. So I know a lot of people that do yoga. You can find yoga spots everywhere. Um, gyms are pretty widely accessible wherever you go. I've been able to find gyms like pretty much anywhere in Asia and out here in South Africa. Pretty much anywhere there's gyms. So gyms are actually a really good thing if you like to do weights and stuff like that. Obviously finding some kind of place to exercise, to work out where you can and it's something that you enjoy doing and just making sure you show up and do that. The other thing of course is diets and the thing is about diet it's actually not that hard to eat relatively low calorie especially out in Asia now the reason for that is the portions are just not high calorie at all so you can get a bowl of pho and it's like 400 500 calories so if you have three meals like that you're eating a really low calorie diet the problem is getting the like adequate nutrition so check it out I just got a big bag of protein so that's what I do. So whenever I'm traveling, I try and supplement, especially with protein, because that's the biggest thing. Most meals that you eat when you're traveling are gonna be high fats and high carb, and not that many fibrous veggies, and not that much protein. So the biggest thing you need to supplement when you're traveling is protein, otherwise you just get skinny fat. Like you can eat a low calorie diet, but if there's no protein in there, you're just gonna get skinny fat. So one thing I usually do is actually order one meal out, and then order extra salad is something I often do when I'm traveling around in Asia, especially in Southeast Asia. It's not that hard to find like salads that you can order in like Thailand or Cambodia, for example. Vietnam's a bit different, like there aren't really salads in restaurants, but you can order dishes with extra vegetables and stuff like that. So I normally try and order like double dishes and because it's cheap out in Southeast Asia, it's not expensive to just order double the amounts and then uh, you know, and then you get adequate nutrition in with that. All right, so you might be thinking like, okay, Alex, yeah, just go show up at the gym or do some exercise and like don't eat too much and, and get a bit of extra protein in. 
It's kind of generic advice, I know. I guess the hard thing to do is really just motivate yourself to stick to some kind of exercise routine while you're traveling. Like that's the hardest thing and I realized that when I got back here, just after like traveling for a couple days and then arriving home, I like, I really enjoy exercising, working out and I just didn't want to do it, right? So every time you're traveling and you get out of a routine, it gets harder and harder to get back into an exercise routine. So really the only answer here is to make it a priority in your life that you show up and you just do it because you're gonna feel better when you're traveling if you're working out and exercising. So yeah, I wish I could give you some kind of like secret formula to it and I haven't perfected it by any means. Avoid uh, fatty foods, deep fried foods and there are definitely options on menus in Asia, I know for sure that are healthy enough and if you just eat like three meals a day of like Asian food you're not gonna get fats you know as long as you're like traveling around and stuff you're active like make it a priority each time you arrive in a new country to just find somewhere even if you work out on the beach do some push-ups or pull-ups and stuff like that that's what I try and do if I don't find a gym if I'm just traveling for a week or so I'll just go and do like home workouts and something is better than nothing so I think that's another big tip is just doing something is 10 times better than not doing anything at all because you can very quickly slide into that oh yeah you know I'm traveling I don't need to work out this is my holiday this is my vacation um, and as soon as that happens then you on a slippery slope downhill and uh, your, your brain's like, no, this isn't something I need to do. So yeah, just try and do something every day or every second day, a few times a week, and um, make it a priority. Just do it in the morning if you have to, before you go out and explore and travel. And of course, the, the ultimate answer is to set up in countries for longer. So that's what I try and do, is set up in a country for a few months at the very least, and that way you can do what I've just done here, get a month long membership. And this really works if you're teaching English because then you can live in a country for like up to a year or longer, you know, and really just get settled in. And that's kind of slow travel and that's something I really like and advocate really. Um, because running around and seeing sights and staying in hostels, you end up like drinking and, you know, not living a very healthy lifestyle. So if you can spend a bit of time to get a routine down and settle into a place, that helps too. So make sure to thumbs up this video if you find it useful, subscribe, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Peace.